Hey everyone, Mr. Newman here, and we're going to investigate some details of finding the zeros of polynomials, especially without a calculator. So, let's get started. Um, first of all, if I ask you to find the zeros of that, the first thing I would do personally is plug into calculator, but there are times when we are not allowed to have one of those. So, without a calculator, let me give you some pointers and tips for finding out how in the world to get the zeros from this thing. Remember, a zero is just when you plug in a zero, or uh, plug in any number, you get out a zero. So um, one of the things that we have, one of the tools we have, is it the rational zero test. What this says is that um, if there's a zero that is rational, in other words, you can write it as a fraction, then it must be this form. It must be the factors of the constant term divided by the factors of the leading coefficient. Now notice on this uh, fu function here, I labeled those. The constant term is the one where there's no x on it, and the leading coefficient has the highest x, uh, power of x. Not necessarily the one in front, but it's the one in front if they're written in descending order. So, um, for example, in this situation, the factors of the constant term would be, and you want to write plus or minus because the numbers could be positive or negative, um, 1, 2, 3, and 6, as those are the factors of 6. While the leading coefficient is 1, so the nice thing is it's just on the denominator 1. That means we could have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. What's nice is this reduces the number of numbers that we have to guess and check. And one of the things you could do is simply plug these in and try, see if we get out the function uh, like f of 1, see if that's equal to 0. Other thing you can do, this is especially um, people that uh, use synthetic division like to do this, or um, the, uh, long division of polynomials if you prefer that, you, we could try to divide the polynomial by x minus 1, since if 1 is a root then x minus 1 is a factor. However, that takes a lot longer, and I would much rather uh, prefer to check and make sure whatever I'm doing um, that I'm dividing by the right, correct number. So, let's try f of 1. Plug in 1. Well, the nice thing, I like trying 1 because you plug it in and very quickly you can see what it's equal to. It is not equal to 0. In fact, I don't even care exactly what it's equal to. I can just tell that's going to be 2 negative, so that's not equal to 0. The other number that you always can uh, try, since you have cross out positive 1, the other number you can try is negative 1. So let's try f of negative 1. Well, the nice thing here is instead of writing all the powers, I'm going to write out what they're equal to. And when you write this out, you see this one is equal to 0. So we now have one of our roots, and we have one of our factors. And with a factor, what we can do is we can factor that out and divide it out of the polynomial, and we have a much smaller polynomial that we have to deal with and work with um, so we can find the other roots quickly. So let's go ahead and divide it out of our polynomial. I'm going to do each step rather quickly because we've been doing polynomial long division now, enough that you guys have gotten the hang of it. If you haven't, you should continue practicing it. Um, I'm going to continue to color code them just so you guys see where these come from and they're not a big jumbled mess, even though they, they really are a big jumbled mess. Um, all right, let's see here. We've got 3x. Yes, that's correct. And there we go. So fortunately, it adds up to 0. It subtracts out to 0, rather. I really should put this on there. I'm getting a little sloppy. And uh, g of, I'm going to call this function g of x, even though it's really just f of x divided by x plus 1. That way I can come over here and say, all right, now that we have this, uh, the, the divisor, let's try another number, another possible 0, into this g of x. Because if it works for the here, if it makes this 0, then it certainly makes the larger function 0, because this is one of the factors of f of x. All right, so we plug in 2. 2 is the next one I like to try, because it's the next. It's most straightforward, and you notice it very nicely becomes 0 as well. So, now I can divide x minus 2 out of this. Now one thing I'm going to mention a little bit is uh, you don't always have to look for divisors this way, especially once you get to x cubed. 
I like how this right here, well, we'll do this in a second, but do you see the pattern x, uh, x cubed minus 2x and 3x minus 6? That looks like that function is, or that, uh, that polynomial is ripe for factoring by grouping. And in fact, it is a very nice result of factoring by grouping. One of the ways I can tell that is when I take out my first factor of x squared, you notice that adds up perfectly to zero. And so I'm gonna pull down the, both of the remaining terms and you notice that also quickly adds up to zero. So I could have just factored that into x minus two times x squared plus three by factoring by grouping. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and circle all of my factors. Let's write them out down here. And remember my goal is to get the zeros. I just like to write it out like this. The zeros then are two, one, negative one, sorry. And then if you solve x squared plus three, you get plus or negative i root three. All right, I just wanted to mention, if you try factoring this by grouping, this would be a much faster way than using polynomial long division again. Although the polynomial long division worked pretty well because uh, they got eliminated to zero very quickly. But um, yeah, one thing is to keep an eye out for factoring things so you don't keep doing the polynomial long division. All right, let me show you another example. What if I want to find all the zeros of this? Well, the possible roots, again, because we have negative six, are positive negative one, two, three, and six. And then one is, again, the coefficient of the leading term. So we get plus or minus one. All right, let's try f of one. And we notice very quickly, nope, that is not zero. But then if we try f of negative one, we get up oh, zero. Cool. So I'm gonna once again divide out. Remember, you need to put a placeholder for the x squared term, zero x squared. So we pull out x squared, we get this. Make sure you're subtracting. And then we now see minus x. We subtract there. And very nicely, the last term uh, subtracts out to zero. Once again, I'm getting in the hang of not writing that. Sorry, guys. Okay, so right here, instead of doing any more checking the roots, we can simply look at it and go, hey, we can divide that out. Uh, so we can factor that, and that's x minus 3 and x plus 2 are the factors. Well, what's nice is those are the three factors. Notice that because these are all rational, the x minus three gives us uh, three, and the x plus two gives us negative two. Those are possible rational roots. So we have negative one, three, and negative two. Notice those are numbers here, negative one, three, and negative two were some of the original possible roots. So that matches up very nicely. All right, let's uh, now go on to one a little bit different where we have the first coefficient is uh, not one. Here, three is our constant term, so I'm gonna put plus or minus one and three. Those are the only two possible rational roots. And then the second term, see, because it's two, the factors are one, or sorry, the leading term, because the factors, the coefficient is two, the factors are one and two. So we have these possible zeros, plus or minus one, and plus or minus three, that's because one over one is one and three over one is one. Then we also have one half, one over two, and three halves, three over two. So we have a handful we can check. Once again, let's start with the simplest, one. We add those up, we quickly realize that's, uh, whoops, oh, that is zero, great. That makes it much, much faster. So x minus one is our factor. Let's divide that into our polynomial, and we start doing the polynomial long division again. All right, there we go. I don't know why it is in the last one. I just got so excited at writing that zero. I don't put the subtraction. All right, now we've got a uh, trinomial, which we can factor, even though a is not one, we can factor this. 2x minus 1 and x plus 3 are the factors. Now notice 1, 2, 3, those are the three factors of this polynomial. Notice that uh, the zeros then are 1, negative 3, 
and one half when you set that equal to zero and solve it. That was one of the possible zeros we had. Um, that might surprise some of you guys because you might be have thought, hey, when we need to check this, we should do x minus a half. Well, we could do that, but I want to I want you to think for a second about how does that compare to two x minus one. Really, this is just having a two factored out in front. So this right here on the right, two x minus one is much better to divide with if you're going to check the fraction one half as a possible zero. So just uh, real quick. Um, to, to recap on that, if you see 3 fourths as a possible zero and you need to check it, it's much faster, much simpler, I think, to check with 4x minus 3. Or, for example, if you have negative 5 sevenths as a possible zero, then you should probably be checking with 7x plus 5. All right, last one. This uh, I mean, it's going to involve uh, sketching a graph you could use, or, or I'm going to just think about the, uh, the data table, and we're going to use the quadratic formula. So uh, this says find all the real solutions of this equation. Notice it's equal to zero, so we're really finding the zeros of the polynomial on the left. Um, so all the possible rational roots, and here rational is a key word, I'll explain why in a moment, is that, uh, let's see here, we've got 12. So negative 12, so plus or minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And then negative 10 gives us plus or minus 1, 2, 5, and 10. Wow, that is a lot of possible roots. So first thing I'm going to do, because it's so many possible roots, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make an input-output table. Okay, I'm going to write out some of the possible roots that are close to zero, some that I feel like I could plug in pretty quickly. And I'm going to start plugging in some of them. Instead of, uh, in, yeah, instead of just plugging them in blindly, though, I'm going to start with some of the, the most straightforward ones. So, for example, I know 1 is going to give me 9. I, I know 0 is not a possible rational root, but it's going to help me locate. Uh, you'll see in a second, it's going to help me locate the rational roots. Um, when I plug in negative 1 on the left there, we get negative 3, so that's not a root. But notice this. Because the uh, polynomials are always connected, if we have 1.1 1. 1 at 9 and we have negative 1 at negative 3, somewhere between there, those two have to be connected. Okay, I don't know where exactly they're going to be connected. It might look like any of those, but I know that that means there's got to be a 0 somewhere between those two. So, what that means is we've got a zero somewhere between negative one and one. In fact, I'm gonna plug in zero on the left there and notice I get negative 12. Now we're, we can be even more specific. If I've got that function, I know at zero, I'm at negative 12. And at one, I'm at positive nine. I know that somewhere here between those two points, I hit zero. Now, I've got to be cautious because even though that's a possible, uh, that's a root in there, it might be an irrational root, in which case it's not even one of these up here, right? Um, so I've, I can think about that, but uh, there's definitely a zero in there somewhere. Let's plug in a few others. I'm going to try two real quick. So we plug in two here and Oh, phew, it worked. That's one of our zeros, which is very good because I think if we tried a lot of fractions, we might have just gone down a, uh, what they call it, a wild goose chase. Where you're looking for something that doesn't exist. All right, so let's uh, divide this out and make this a little simpler. Fortunately, we only have a, a cubic right here, so I think we're going to get down to a quadratic, and we'll be able to use the quadratic formula to finish this problem, okay? So... We're getting this. It's not a very pretty quadratic. So uh, yeah, good thing we have the formula. So negative 10x squared minus 5x plus 6. I cannot uh, picture any of uh, any real quick any roots. So I think the faster option for me is the quadratic formula. Now, you do need to have this memorized. This is very, very important, okay? They do not give this to you on the formula sheet at the end of the year as far as I know. Um, so. The quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in each of these values and we get a giant ugly square root. Well, we could simplify that in the square root. Fortunately, it adds up uh, to a positive number. So that means 5 plus or minus the square root of 265 over negative 10. Now, 265 is not a perfect square. So that means we have two irrational roots. 5 plus the square root of 265 over negative 10. And we also have 5 minus the square root of 265 over negative 10. Okay, so 1, 2, and 3, those are all the real solutions of this equation up here. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good day.